All right. Uh, hopefully the volume on this video isn't too fucked. Uh, this is going to be another more casual, rambly sort of video, uh, talking a bit more about the careless, short-sighted creation of new human beings and how this is a, a very bad sort of thing, uh, not just for the children that are being carelessly forced into existence, but also for the parents that are oftentimes completely unprepared for the task at hand and oftentimes have little to no appreciation for what it is that they've done, uh, what it is that they are doing when they bring someone into existence and take it about themselves to gradually assist in the, in the molding of this human being, the developmental process of a human being that will gradually become an adult human being. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think many people would disagree. That's a very profound sort of thing to do. Uh, and many people don't act as though it is. Many people treat it as though it's gauging their behavior, people treat it as though it's this very, you know, seemingly inconsequential sort of thing. Um, so previous video, I, I talked about parental regret and resentment and how this is often a, a very bad thing and a very common sort of thing. Uh, it, yeah, it's just festering, oftentimes gradually over time increasing feeling of resentment felt by parents towards their children that they have brought into existence oftentimes either accidentally or it might as well have been by accident when you take into account just how little again foresight how little thought and consideration took place prior to their conception to the point where, again, it might as well have been an accident. And um, one of the most common causes of this being two relatively young uh, human beings that have oftentimes primarily formed their relationships uh, around very short-sighted, selfish sort of pleasure-seeking and have allowed an attachment to develop for, again, oftentimes selfish reasons. Um, and much of it comes down to... The biggest problems arise, I think, when two people get together out of... They can't stand themselves. Two people who cannot stand their own company, who cannot stand to be with themselves and sit with themselves and exist separate uh, from another. You know, being without a relationship for any length of time is very, very difficult. Uh, these people in particular tend to get with others and have children with others who they don't, who are oftentimes just as miserable as they are and self-loathing as they are. Two people who cannot stand themselves get together and of course oftentimes when someone cannot stand themselves and, and, and form a relationship with someone they're not going to be able to stand each other but the attachment will develop and it will reach a point where being with one another is preferable <laughs> to being with themselves. And again it's uh, you know this biological trap that the attachment gradually increases over time, becomes very difficult to get out of it, um, especially in the, in the short term, it's easier to just stay in the trap because getting out of that can be quite difficult the longer it goes on for, uh, especially if a child or children get thrown into the mix. Um, and people will opt to suffer in the trap rather than put in the, the effort to, to get out of it. And this oftentimes comes at a cost, a price far more steep than if they would have put in the, the effort to escape from that trap. 
Um, just not being able to be with themselves. People who are like that are far more likely to not only get into harmful relationships, very toxic relationships, but they're also far more likely to want to create someone in an attempt to maybe not fix themselves, but again, people who cannot stand themselves are going to be far more likely to want to create someone that will love them unconditionally. And that's why many people just in general have children. So they can create someone that will be around through thick or thin, regardless of how they are treated. They will always come crawling back to them. And this is oftentimes not the case. Many people will completely detach from their incredibly toxic parents, but it is also the case that many people won't. And that is about as unconditional of a love as you are going to find. It's just the case that most father-son, father-daughter, mother-daughter, mother-son relationships are going to be sustained far more easily than any other form of relationship when you take into account the level of hate that is felt by one or by each other towards each other. You see it all the time. Relationships like that to where they're just, yeah, they, 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 because very little compares to that level of attachment. I cannot speak for everyone, but, and my relationship with my parents are, it was relatively good, but yeah, the idea of losing either of them uh, terrifies the shit out of me. And at least at this point in my life, I think those are the losses that would impact me the most in the long term. And it would be very difficult. They would have to do something quite, quite bad for me to disown them entirely. And I, odds are, the, the reverse could probably be said as well. Um, so yeah, horrible human beings creating people in the hope that their creation will love them in, in spite of them being rather horribly toxic human beings. I think this is a very common, very, very common sort of thing. You have people that are not only unprepared for the task, but just are the last... Just, the, just about the last person that should be allowed to create and raise human beings are going to be quite likely to, to, to do that, to create and raise human beings. That's a very, very unfortunate truth. I think I clicked on this video with the aim of like giving some advice and I'm just sort of, that's not what happened. Uh, but as always, creating people, very big deal. More people should act as though it is. Uh, no telling where this gigantic life ship, this planet, life on earth, all this stuff, no, no telling where this is all headed, but uh, I do think that discussing this topic, antinatalism, for example, I think the most constructive aim is going to be found in just attempting to get more people to think about it more deeply, especially younger people who really, really struggle 
to, again, conceptualize the level of fire that they are playing with, what it means to create a human being and raise a human being, and just how difficult of a thing that is, how consequential of a thing that is. And again, this is something that people are not going to, no reasonable person is going to disagree with that. So I think that most progress, you know, with regards to discussing this topic is going to be found in this. And just finding the optimal ways of conveying that to the people who really, really need to hear it the most.